next story is nightmare fuel, inspired by the legend of Michael Jackson's nose, a hot topic that surfaced the internet and media back when MJ was still alive. We wanted to share our creepy slash humorous take on the tale in honor of the legend himself. Here's what it looked like. This is a story that happened years and years ago. I don't tell many people about it as I come from a wealthy family and I've always been worried about tarnishing my family's reputation with dramatic scandals, but now, with the anonymity of the internet, I feel comfortable sharing my experience. Thus, I won't be using my real name for this account. As a younger child, I went to an elite private school into which only the rich and powerful could hope to enroll their kids. As such, I remembered quite a few kids with celebrity surnames who were supposedly the children of affluent millionaires or actors and that sort of thing. However, at the time, I couldn't care less about all that. They were just normal kids to me. All I cared about was finishing my classes so I could return home and play the newest games from Nintendo. Since I never participated in the playground elitism, I didn't have many, if any, friends at that school but obviously there wouldn't be a story here if there wasn't some exception. There was one kid who was also quiet and reserved while in class, and for that reason, we gravitated towards each other. Everyone called him Blanket. I thought it was his real legal name, but I've since found out that it was just a nickname. Anyway, him and I got along pretty well as we shared a very similar experience interacting with the rest of our classmates. We were the weird ones to put it plainly. After we met, it wasn't long before he invited me over to his house. I told Blanket that I would have to get permission from my parents first, but they were so excited about the fact that I was finally making friends that it was easy to convince them. The next day after school, Blanket and I met outside of school. We only waited for about a minute before we were picked up by his very own limousine that drove us directly to his house. I was astonished when I stepped out. His house was more than just a mansion. It was a whole tiny city with a wide expanse of grassy hills surrounding a structure that was more like a castle than a house. And just over the stony peaks, I could see that there was some kind of private amusement park in the background with a Ferris wheel and everything. Welcome to my ranch. It's pretty nice, isn't it? That's an understatement. Is your dad famous or something? It's supposed to be sort of a secret, but my dad is Michael Jackson. Don't tell anyone, okay? Okay, yeah, I've heard of him. Is he here? No, he's gone for the weekend. He took the private jet out to go get a fancy dinner in Paris or something. You don't seem too excited. Is something wrong? You don't hate my dad, do you? Of course not, dude. I, I didn't mean to be nosy, but is the rumor about your dad's nose real? Shut up! It's none of your damn business, so beat it! Whoa, I'm sorry, dude. How about we watch a movie? I was intrigued to watch a film at their house, and of course, they had a home movie theater. It was the size of a regular movie theater, except the whole thing was ours to control. Before we knew it, we'd watched at least three movies. And even though there wasn't a clock around or even any windows, I knew it had to be past my usual bedtime. But, of course, we were unchaperoned, so it didn't matter. That's when Blanket turned to me and said, Hey, Billy, do you want to play hide-and-seek in the house? Hell yeah! Alright, let's play rock, paper, scissors to find out who's it. Blanket won best two out of three, which meant I had to be the one who looked for him. Admittedly, I was a little worried as I felt I was at a disadvantage. I was barely able to find my way through the halls while Blanket had lived there his whole life and knew every nook and cranny. But I'd lost fair and square, so I closed my eyes and counted down from ten, and when I opened my eyes, he was gone. I left the movie theater and began walking through the plethora of hallways and foyers and stairways of the mansion. I was immediately lost, and I knew I was never going to find Blanket. It was literally like searching for a needle in a haystack. Still, I hoped that Blanket would take it easy on me, so I continued to walk carefully through the maze. Eventually, I came across the longest hallway I'd ever seen. It was the size of a mall aisle, one of the main drags where the stores are lined up, but it was far narrower, like an old hotel. and. Every door I opened led straight into an empty bedroom. There must have been a dozen bedrooms in that one hallway. Then, I heard a strange voice laughing all the way from the end of the hall. <laughs> Hello? Blanket, are you down here? No. <laughs> I knew you'd be arriving eventually, Billie Jean. 
How are you like in Neverland? You mean the castle? Uh, I mean, it's pretty cool, I guess, but if you're not Blanket, who are you? Oh, Billy. You know that I am the one. Blanket, this isn't funny. Aren't we playing hide and seek? Come and find me, Billy. <laughs> I was terribly confused. I knew this had to be Blanket because they knew my name in the game we were playing, and Blanket said we were alone, but the voice sounded nothing like him. By then, I knew I had to find out, and I had already discerned where the voice was coming from. At the very end of the hallway was a slender door that faced straight at me. It either had to be a closet or some kind of penthouse room. I quietly approached the door and opened it slowly. Inside, it was pure darkness, but I could feel the cramped stuffiness of the air and knew it had to be some kind of linen closet. <laughs> I guess you found me. Now, I'll tell you my secret. I'm Michael Jackson. Wanna shake my hand? Michael Jackson? But you're not supposed to be here. I came back from Paris just to meet you, Billy Jean. Now, come on! Woo! Shake my hand and prove that you're my lover! I couldn't even see him. All the lights were off and that closet absorbed light like a black hole. But I could feel the presence of a person in there. Reluctantly, I reached out my hand and eased it into the darkness. I grabbed onto what I thought was a hand, but... As I began to shake it, something went wrong. Whatever I was holding on to suddenly fell off. I clenched my fist and jerked back my hand just to look down and see a bloody nose. <coughs> All of a sudden, he jumped out of the shadows, and there he was, Michael Jackson in the flesh, but with no nose. Blood was gushing from his face as he screamed. Well, I guess I'm it, so it's time for me to get you! Then, he lunged at me, but I jumped back and began to run back down the hallway at top speed. Every time I looked over my shoulder, I saw him chasing after me like a maniac. I was so lost in the house that I ran down so many corners, but he kept following me and wouldn't let me get any space. <laughs> I'm gonna make you my son and call you Pillow! Finally, I found the door to the backyard and to the amusement park. Panicking, I jumped into the cart of the Ferris wheel, which was somehow operating on its own, and rode it to the top while crouched down inside. When I got to the top, I peeked over the edge and saw Michael Jackson down in the yard, looking everywhere. Where the hell is my nose? I'll get you eventually, you little smooth criminal! <laughs> I crouched back down. I heard him go back inside, so when I reached the bottom, I jumped out, threw the nose in the backyard, and then ran away. When I finally reached the street, I managed to flag down a cab by a divine stroke of luck. They were already carrying a fare, but they took pity on a scared kid and drove me home free of charge after dropping off the other person. I didn't tell them anything, but I thanked them for helping me out. I snuck back into my house and started spinning a web of lies to tell my parents. Obviously, I never spoke to Blanket again, and since I was back down to having no friends, I asked my parents to enroll me in public school to get away from him. He just looked too much like his father. The next story was inspired by this infamous Michael Jackson animatronic that has surfaced the internet for quite some time now. The term L I U A K I was linked to the video, which was just another way of saying, Annie, are you okay? Like I said before, this was just an animatronic, but really sent shockwaves online for its distinct disturbing facial features, and how it was able to make subtle movements. For anyone with the name Annie, we hope you are okay. Years and years ago, my life looked a lot different. I had to move towns to start working at a new job. At first, I ran into trouble finding a place. I spent many nights going through page after page of Craigslist ads, as that was just about the only way to sublease a room back in the day, and I didn't have the savings to afford my own place just yet. However, I eventually lucked out with a pretty cheap listing for a room in a basement with two other people living upstairs. There wasn't much information other than that, but when I arrived, 
I realized why the rent was so affordable. The landlord, also one of the residents, was a frail, creepy-looking old man with the most wrinkled, leathery skin I've ever seen, even on an elderly person. HD television was becoming really popular around this time, and I couldn't help but think to myself that this guy had more wrinkles on his forehead than Gordon Ramsay. Of course, I tried to hide what I was thinking. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Gord. I mean, Gus. I'm Gus. Well, don't just stand there. Get inside! I brushed aside his curmudgeonly attitude and brought in my luggage. He showed me to the basement, where I was to be living. And my first impression of it honestly wasn't so bad. I'd never been the type of person to be creeped out by basements, and the space was relatively in good condition with lots of room, though it was a little dark and drafty. Still, nothing I couldn't handle for a few months to a year. This is a really nice space. Of course it is, wise guy. Do I look like some kind of broke geezer to you? No, sir. It was just a compliment. An awkward silence ensued, and I couldn't stop staring at the wrinkles on his forehead. He seemed to need a moment to catch his breath before going back up the stairs. I thought to myself at least his trouble with mobility meant he would rarely bother me in my own space. The silence was unbearable, so I tried to make normal small talk. Do you, uh, live with your wife upstairs? That old hag died years ago. Oh, I'm sorry for- Don't your... sweat it, kid. That wench was for the streets. Or better yet, the nursing home. Her wrinkly, saggy melons were expired goods anyway. Uh, thanks for the info, I guess. Did, did you two have any kids? I hate kids. Having kids is like having a dog. Except you can't put them in a cage. Thank God for playing bees. <laughs> well, I hate to keep prying, but uh, who's the other tenant living upstairs? The ad said there were two, so I just want to get to know so I can know my roommates. I'll tell you a secret, if you'll keep it. Uh, okay. <laughs> I live with L.I.U.W.A.K.I. Um, L.I.U. what? It's short for, Annie, are you okay? <laughs> Wait a minute, are you saying you live with Michael Jackson? Shh, quiet down! I don't want the neighbors finding out, idiot! Okay, but if I'm living with Michael Jackson, I have to meet him. Can you show me to his room? Sure, if you insist. He led back up the stairs and down the hallway to his bedroom. I didn't believe him for a second. Michael Jackson's death wasn't even that long ago at this point. But I had to see what he was talking about. Half of me was amused, and the other half was concerned with how deep the senile old man's delusions went. When he opened the door to his bedroom and introduced me to this L.I.U.A.K., as he put it, I understood that they went down quite a bit farther than what I had expected. This is Michael. Michael, I'd like you to meet our new housemate, Gus. I was petrified. This L.I.U.A.K.I. was not even a real person. It was a ghoulish animatronic thing that looked vaguely like the person it was supposed to be. It moved around in the most unnatural way, even being able to make expressions with its face, which was just a disintegrating piece of silicone that was barely attached. It turned to look right at me, then robotically moved its arm to wave. Well, wave back! Reluctantly, I obliged the old man's peculiar demand. What made the presence of this mechanical monstrosity even more unsettling was how it changed that hostile man's demeanor to someone somehow more pleasant, almost like he was in love with the thing. I excused myself so I could be alone in my new room. Just picturing that distorted face sent chills down my spine, and it never got easier. Throughout my time living there, I would frequently see that thing when I went up to the hallway to use the bathroom or leave the house. It would just stand in front of its bedroom door and follow me with its eyes, and sometimes it would walk around the kitchen aimlessly. Yet, somehow, the landlord never seemed concerned with this strange behavior, as if he really believed it was alive. One night, things started to cross a line. I woke up around 3 a.m. to the creeping sound of an inhuman voice. <laughs> Until that point, I had no idea that awful machine could speak. But now this demonic mock-up of Michael Jackson was talking to itself as it stalked the hallway right upstairs. I watched my door from my bed and refused to admit that I was actually terrified. The doorknob rattled. Then the door flew open, slamming against the wall. There he was, just standing in the doorway staring at me in the darkness. He started laughing again while he tilted his head to the side farther than any human could. I threw my covers over my face and turned over. I figured if I ignored it, it would go away. Thankfully, I eventually heard it walk away and was able to sleep. The next morning, my door was still open. As I left for work, it was in its usual place at the end of the hall, watching me with its empty eyes. After not sleeping very well the previous night, I was running late for work, so I didn't have time to talk to the old man about what had happened. And of course, when I got home, he was already asleep. I hoped it was just a fluke. All this crazy L.I.U.W.A.K.I. stuff was driving me insane. The whole situation was a nightmare, and I had to find a way out. Unfortunately, 
I didn't find it in time. The next night started off the same way. At three in the morning, my door slammed open. I was standing there in the darkness at the end of the hallway. Then, I could hear that disturbing noise. He bolted towards my room and rushed to the foot of my bed. Leave me alone or I'm calling the cops! He climbed over and pinned me, screaming in my face. You think I don't see you mean mugging me all the time? This is my house! That's when the animatronic began to repeatedly slam his head against my face. I couldn't break free from the weight of all the metal, so I saw my only option as the lamp next to me on my nightstand. I reached over and took hold of it and smashed it across his face. He laughed and fell back, but I didn't stop. I'd been tormented by this insane thing for far too long. I wanted to make sure that thing never moved again. I pushed him off the bed and shoved my knee into his neck, pummeling him with the lamp until his stupid laugh finally stopped. I could feel the hot blood streaming down my face, coating my hands and soaking into my clothes. I was exhausted, but my heart was beating so quick I had no hope of sleeping. I curled up against my bed and tried to calm myself down, but no matter how much I tried to rock myself to sleep, I couldn't even understand why I was so disturbed. Hours later, the morning sun finally shined through the window and illuminated everything. I had wondered how the old man upstairs had managed not to wake up to all the noise, but then it made sense. He was right there on the floor, in a pool of his own blood. I looked up the stairs and saw the animatronic monster smiling down on me. Disturbing, right? The video footage you see here has been a creepy internet meme for quite some time. Some claim that it's a cursed video of a distorted Michael Jackson. The creature has no torso and just dances in a disturbing manner with its two legs. We figured we'd create animation inspired by this cursed video, since this is a Michael Jackson video after all. Here's what it looked like. I like to go out for jogs on the regular, especially during the nighttime. It was just an everyday routine of mine, but my dad wasn't the biggest fan of it. He would often ring up my phone just to give his two cents, saying, I know you're a strong, independent woman, but can you please stop jogging in the night? I can't save you if you're always out and about. Dad, we've been through this a thousand times. I have so much work during the day. This is the only time I can exercise. Quit being so paranoid. Annie, you know I'm just worried about you, right? He said, probably hoping I would empathize. I'm not the only one who goes jogging at night, Dad. Yeah, I know, but before he had the chance to say anything else, I hung up on him and turned off my cell phone as I resumed my daily routine. I had gone jogging many times at night and nothing out of the ordinary ever happened to me. So, after ending the call with my dad, I left the unit for a midnight jog at a nearby park. What I liked most about it was the tranquility engulfing the air. It allowed me to keep a level head as I relieved myself from work-related stress. Then, moments later as I was jogging along the sidewalk, I couldn't help but feel the watchful eyes of an unknown entity hiding amidst the trees. I stopped for a brief moment to look at my surroundings and thought, oh, Dad should really stop calling me. His paranoia is so contagious. But as I resumed the exercise, I stopped dead in my tracks after seeing a man appear a couple meters in front of me, startling me quite a bit. At first, I was convinced he was only a midnight jogger like myself, minding his own business. But that thought was completely trumped when I saw him beginning to dance in a series of steps that reminded me of Michael Jackson. Woo! With the force! With the force also! Don't say anything again enough! Keep on! As I began to cautiously jog around the dancing man while keeping my distance, I noticed his skin was pale white and his outfit was precisely like MJ's in his concerts. He seemed incredibly jovial as he performed like a pro, even without an audience. But what gave me the creeps was his smile, coupled with dead eyes glancing into my soul. I quickened the pace, thinking I'd eventually lose him, but moments later I heard the sounds of footsteps grazing the floor. I turned my head to take a glance and remember seeing the same man 
except he was moonwalking towards me at a rapid pace. It didn't matter if this was some kind of prank or not. I wasn't going to take any chances anyway. So needlessly to say, I made a run for it, constantly looking behind me. And even when he suddenly dissipated, I still ran for my life, sensing an ominous presence lurking in the dark. Then, moments later, I heard a voice that sounded much like a whisper, saying, <laughs> I'm right here. The devilish tone in its voice sent chills down my spine, so even when no one was there, I yelled, Leave me alone or I'm calling the cops! The next thing I knew was that I was bolting into the elevator as soon as I returned to the apartment, and as I was waiting for the doors to close, I saw the man a few meters away, giggling as he gazed at me with menacing eyes. Hence, I clicked on the fifth floor button and incessantly pushed the closed door as I stomped my feet in frustration. Come on, come on, come on! Every second felt like an hour, and my heart throbbed beyond anything I'd ever experienced before. However, for unknown reasons, it took such a long time for the doors to close, and just before they did, the man stuck his right foot in between them, prompting them to open again. I quivered in the corner, averting my gaze as the man entered the elevator and clicked on the floor above mine. As the elevator doors shut, it literally felt like the oxygen had cut out from that small, confined elevator space. That's how petrified I was. When we finally reached my floor, the lights in the elevator suddenly went out, causing me to panic. <coughs> Minutes later, the man snickered and said in a low, sinister tone, Benny, are you okay? <laughs> I repeatedly clicked on the open door button until the power was finally back on, and I ran for dear life as I scampered across the long corridor, and when I took another peek behind me, the man had gotten off on the same floor. While I knew I was near my apartment unit, I changed my mind midway, fearing he would know where I lived and pin me to a corner where I had no means of escape. Hence, I opted for the emergency exit, where I scaled up the stairs. As I frantically scurried through the steps, which felt like forever, the psycho hurtled behind me, his ghostly voice echoing throughout the space, saying, I'm coming to get you, Annie! <laughs> How the hell did he know my name? I felt he wasn't just a random person, but a stalker who had been observing me for a long time. As I glanced at the steps below me, I could see the man running up the stairs with two exaggerated long legs, making wide, crawly steps that made him more frightening than he already was. <laughs> Annie! I need to know if you're okay! I began shedding gallons of tears while running up the flight of stairs, but before I lost all hope, an idea came to mind, and I instantly slammed the exit door leading to the 20th floor of the building and ran as fast as I could until I reached the elevator again. Then, as soon as I entered the elevator, I did the same thing as before, pushing the number to my floor in hopes that I wouldn't encounter that psycho again. From a distance, I could see the deranged man sauntering towards me with over-elaborate steps, suddenly quickening the pace as he noticed the elevator their doors closing. <laughs> I yelled in horror as he came close yet again, but failed to reach the elevator in time. I hastily clicked the 13th floor and ran to my apartment unit, where I quickly locked the door and went to bed. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I had made this up in my head, but in the wee hours of the morning, I could hear a light giggle from just outside my apartment door, and when I peeked through the peephole, there was nothing but flickering lights and an empty corridor. Where the hell is my nose? I'll get you eventually, you little smooth criminal! I'm gonna make you my son and call you Pillow! <laughs>